Hey everyone, welcome to my Web Fundamentals series. This is a prerequisite for the Web Application Hacking course I'm going to go ahead and do, but I think it's absolutely an imperative that you learn the Web Fundamentals before you can go ahead and hack anything. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a rough outline of um, how I want the course to look. It is subject to change, however, you know, um, this is just a rough outline to give you guys, you know, a rough explanation of what what's going to come and yeah. So as um as I always have believed, you know, the ethos is before we can learn anything, before we can hack anything, we must learn it. So how web works before we can hack it, we must learn it. So really it's the case of learning the fundamentals from, you know, the bare bones under the hood as much as we need to know. Obviously there's more nitty gritty bits and pieces, but as your experience of web apps go and the requirement for those nitty gritty bits of knowledge, you know, we'll go ahead. But these will be the main points all we're covered. So initially we're going to look at HTTP, the protocol, how it works, and just basically just using it. Then we're going to mix in with some browsers, basically comparing how just a normal HTTP uh, protocol works and how browsers use that. Then we're going to look, then we're going to look at how web applications basically uh, host HTTP work, uh, services. So common web ports, basically uh, saying, well, where is web hosted? How is it hosted Apache? Uh, does it vary from Apache to IIS and Windows and stuff? Then we're going to look at the different kinds of requests, so get requests. We're going to look at how it works in a browser, how it works in Wireshark on the wire, and then we're going to use Netcat as well to make a raw request. This will give you basic clean insights to the different um, levels of abstraction. So for example, a browser will do a lot of the work for you, whereas Netcat, you have to manually write those uh, write those bits and pieces in, in your request body. So yeah, um, then we'll look at the HTTP status codes. Um, you won't even need to know the main ones, but to be honest, it's just worth knowing them um, for future reference so you just know what to look at. So if you go ahead and Google uh, um, HTTP status code 418, you will uh, see that it says I'm a teapot, which is an interesting one. Maybe I spoiled that. Who knows? And then make a post request and basically try to send one, the different types and the way they vary. So looking at coding, looking at the different kinds of data we're going to send, and really a case of just learning how to send a post request and comparing it to a get request. Then we're going to look at some other verbs, put and delete, for example, and how it relates to pen testing. There may be cases where you're on a web app that actually accepts put, which actually updates some data um, or overrides some data using the put, uh, the put verb that isn't supposed to be like that, but it is. And, you know, maybe you get some profit from there. <laughs> so really a case of just learning the other kinds of verbs. So it's not just put and delete, there's more too. For example, options. Then we're going to look at authentication. So, for example, how we authenticate an application. Not just a case of passing a username and password, but a case of how actual HTTP has authentication built into it and the different kinds. Then we're going to look at cookie sessions and storage. Basically a sense of, you know, how an application, how a web application um, knows who we are. Since TCP, um, not TCP, since uh, HTTP is a stateless protocol, it doesn't actually know who we are. So we have to have some kind of persistent knowledge of who, who is who. So we're going to go ahead and cover that. Then we're going to look at using curl in the browser, uh, curl versus the browser, in the sense of basically looking at how they vary and how you can get around certain things and how sometimes the browser may trick you. Then we're going to look at same origin policy and uh, cause as well to, to understand why that's in place, the security behind it and how it can um, defend against things such as cross-site scripting and that kind of thing. Then we're going to look at directories, a really a case of just you know, looking at how web directories are put together. And then finally, HTTPS, just basically the secure version of HTTP, or secure in a, in quotes at least, <laughs> depends on how actually secure the web applications are. Well. So this is at least obviously trans transmit securely. Okay, then we'll look at how basically web apps are built, put together, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. On the client side, that is, and then DOM is a prerequisite for DOM XSS. We're really learning how the domain object model works, uh, document object model works, and how that relates to browsers, and how that relates to JavaScript, and how we can mess with that. Then we're going to look at server side languages, so basically PHP input and output. This is super helpful when it comes to, say, the OSWE exam, because obviously you're not going to be able to read the code on the client side. So super important, then SQL intro and the jar and C sharp. The last two may not have a chance to do, but we'll find out. Then we look at basically how we connect to our application. So there's DNS, there's virtual host routing in like Apache, for example, and it can vary from place to place. And then finally, REST and SOAP, which is basically how you send data for example in rest you may send your data as um in like a file path so for example like my web app forward slash cars forward slash mercedes and then robots that take c services basically all the other security bits and pieces you may look for so once you've covered that and there may be more as well we're going to go ahead and look at the other stuff too so this just covers web fundamentals but of course there's burp suite in there as well once you've completed the web fundamentals and then there's you know attacks which is a whole million attacks there and then web, web, web pen test methodology. And again, these aren't finished, these are kind of just put together. 
And then uh, once you've done that, there's also an infrastructure course and a programming course I'm going to be putting together when the time comes. It's also worth mentioning that I've um, invested some, <laughs> I can't draw, but I've invested some money into um, getting together some graphics. Uh, so now I can effectively just, you know, draw when it comes to my tutorials, which of course is very helpful and will hopefully aid in the improvement of my learning. So hopefully this helps you <laughs> get a rough understanding of what, what's going to come. Congratulations, you're now one step closer to being a webpacker. Join me in my next video and my series to learn more, develop, grow, and become the best webpacker. Oh, and like and subscribe, that'd be super helpful. Thanks, bye.